it, let's move on now to the Benedict's test, which is going to test for reducing sugars. Now, a reducing sugar is a sugar that actually has a free aldehyde group, which is exposed. So monosaccharides like glucose will be uh, reducing sugars. Uh, the disaccharide maltose uh, will actually yield reducing sugars, but disaccharides like sucrose will give negative results. Um, we're gonna add one mil of our Bendix reagent to each one of our tubes. And you're gonna notice something interesting, that the color doesn't change. And this is because we actually have to subject these reactions to heat. The heat is going to um, facilitate the reaction between the Benedict's reagent and the reducing sugar with its free aldehyde group. For example, um, heat will actually break up the glucose into the two, sorry, glu um, the heat will break up maltose into the two glucose monomers, thus resulting in the production of two glucose reducing sugars. The heat will break up sucrose into glucose and fructose and we'll be able to see the reaction after we heat it. So I'm gonna add these in, and then I'm gonna take these tubes and I'm gonna put them in a pot of boiling water in my kitchen. So garage lab is suddenly going to turn into kitchen lab, and we are going to subject it to, I believe it's five minutes under heat, and then we'll bring it back and we'll take a look at what we get. So stay tuned. Okay, everybody, welcome to my kitchen. So before we put these reactions, these Benedict reactions, into the hot water, I just wanted to show you again that the reagent hasn't really turned any color. So here are the water, glucose, sucrose, here's starch, here's even the egg white. You can see everything is kind of a bluish green color. Here's our potato and our apple. We've got our onion and our milk. Even the milk, even though it's opaque, it is still kind of a bluish color. There's our peanut, nice blue color, and here are our three unknowns. So let's now take them and put them into the pot. I've got a pot right here of hot water. It was just boiling. I'm gonna take this and I'm actually gonna set this inside and try not to burn myself. There we go. And this is going to sit in the hot water for about five minutes. Okay, I've taken the reactions out of the hot water. Let's see what we have. As expected, our water hasn't really changed any color. It's still the same color as the Benedict's reagent. But take a look at what glucose has done. This brick red color is indicative of a large amount of a reducing sugar such as glucose. When you compare that actually to sucrose, you get a little bit of a green color. Now remember, the heat is going to break up the sucrose into glucose and fructose. And the uh, glucose is a reducing sugar. I believe the fructose is not. So this green color is actually pretty indicative of a disaccharide that would break up into at least one reducing sugar. We've got our starch. We wouldn't really expect starch to turn any color and it doesn't. We've got our egg white over here, which is kind of a purpley color. So there might be some reducing sugars in that egg white itself. Now let's go take a look at our food groups. We've got ourselves a green color, which is indicative of a disaccharide that would break up uh, through the heat reaction into um, probably at least um, a reducing monosaccharide. So one of those two monomers of that disaccharide is going to be um, a reducing sugar. Apple, nice and red. So that, that makes sense because, you know, apples are relatively sweet. So there's probably a good amount of glucose in an apple. This is your onion. Now this is a sweet onion I used. So there's a little bit of a color. The yellowy orange again is indicative of the presence of at least one monomer being a reducing sugar. We got ourselves milk, sort of that greenish color again. So that's a positive reaction. We've got our peanut butter, which I wouldn't really expect to have too many sugars because this was organic uh, peanut butter that I used. So it's still blue in color. And here are our three unknowns. And there they are. Unknown one, two, and three. So unknown um, one has kind of a greenish color, which would be indicative of a disaccharide, uh, yielding probably at least one monomer being a reducing sugar. Here's unknown two and three with a nice orangey color. This is really nice and indicative of the presence of a lot of reducing sugars. So that is the Benedict's test. Again, showing you a definite negative and a definite positive. 
that would be the presence of an awful lot of reducing sugars, and then showing you a negative and a somewhat positive reaction with a small amount of reducing sugars. So that's the Benedict's test. I'm gonna clean up after this, and then we're gonna do a test for triglycerides, uh, fats and oils, and it's gonna be a little bit different. 